Welcome to this Architecture Today webinar, Zinc as a Building Envelope, from specification to installation. Introducing your chair for this webinar, editor of Architecture Today, Isabel Allen. Thank you for joining us. Today, we're going to be looking at the way zinc has been used over the years to deliver elegant and effective solutions for roofs, facades, rainwater goods, and ornamental elements. As well as showing the many applications of the various products, we'll delve into the details with illustrations of how they're applied in situ. We're delighted to have technical expertise on hand to answer any questions you may have. So I'd like to introduce from VM Zinc, Jonathan Lowy, who's the Operational Marketing Manager, and Nick Lavery, who's Specification Manager Ireland and Training Manager. Um, Jonathan, would you like to give a quick outline of your role? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Isabel. Um, so I, I sort of got two hats. I, I get involved in uh, marketing and communication, but also a lot in the technical aspects of our business. I've been fortunate in that I've been able to work in a number of countries, France, the US and the UK. So um, I, I get involved with uh, a lot of architects and installers about how to install Zinc. And Nick, what does your job involve? I have a dual role. I am specification manager for Ireland. Uh, so that's out and about meeting architects and getting zinc specified. I am also ProZinc manager for the UK and Ireland, which is a little bit more hands-on, a little bit more technical. My background is I worked on uh, with zinc on building sites for years, many years. And so I'm sort of more a contact point for installers as well. Thank you, Nick. Um, so we will have opportunities for questions for Jonathan and Nick immediately after each of our four presentations and then more Q&A at the end of the session. So please do feel free to raise any thoughts or questions you might have. You can actually put your question through at any time throughout the webinar. Uh, we do get an awful lot of questions, so please do get in early. Click away. We'll get to as many as we can during the session and we will follow up afterwards with replies to any, to any that we can't squeeze in. So make sure you leave your email address and we can get back to you. Now let's begin with part one. Zinc as a building envelope, specification to installation. In part one, we'll cover zinc's architectural history, the roof substrate and standing seam roofing. Some examples. Interlocking panels at Holes Bay Pool, standing seam at Water End in the Lake District, bespoke rain screen facade in London, and standing seam in Malden, Essex. A satellite image, but of what? Paris, and the predominant colour is grey. The nature of the architecture chosen by Baron Haussmann in the middle of the 19th century, combined with the colour and availability of zinc, made it the ideal material. Much of this architecture required roofs to have a slope of 3 degrees. This is still the minimum slope for zinc roofs as built. Going below this slope greatly increases the chances of water ingress and staining and is not recommended. Paris and right St Bartholomew's Church in Liège, the first ever zinc roof fitted in 1809. Zinc ore is relatively common. The richest areas are Peru and Canada, but zinc mines do also exist closer to home in Ireland and Sweden and up until 1949 in the North Pennines. Traces of zinc were even found in the ruins of Pompeii. VM zinc has been produced continuously since 1837. Zinc was not only used in the redevelopment of Paris, but was also widely used in the UK for civic buildings, railway stations, King's Cross facade, top right, etc. in the 19th century. However, zinc's use in the UK, unlike in continental Europe, remained quite limited and indeed almost disappeared entirely by 1990. The Picton Reading Room Dome, Liverpool, was built in 1879 using zinc. After 133 years, many of the zinc panels were needing to be replaced. However, much of the original open gap boarding was kept, thanks to good design and installation. While the vast majority of the original design was kept, 21st century regulations meant that panel width had to be reduced and standing seams were incorporated between the batten caps. Current corrosion rates are less than 2 microns per year, 
a sheet of zinc is at least 700 microns thick. A cold vented roof must have an air inlet at the base and air outlet at the ridge, minimum 10 millimeters open, a 50 millimeter deep continuous cavity between the back of the substrate and the installation. A larger cavity is fine, but not a smaller one. Plywood often uses slightly acidic glues, and during damp conditions, these can get trapped between the zinc and the plywood. When a vented plywood deck is fitted, VM Zinc Plus with a 60 micron underside coating should be used. VM Zinc Plus protects the backside of the zinc from the non compatible support. Vented, fully supported zinc roofs and walls follow Code of Practice 143 5 and British Standard EN 501. A warm, non vented roof with insulation above the roof structure. A non vented warm zinc roof must have a fully supported continuous self sealing Aludex Max vapor barrier a continuous layer of rigid insulation above the Aludex Max, reducing thermal bridges. VM Zinc Breather Membrane VM Zinc Plus In the UK, this means that the roof structure is entirely below the insulation. The structural roof has a BBA certificate and can be used with both PIR and mineral board insulation. Bearing plates and pegs greatly reduce thermal bridges, thus further enhancing the system. The fully supported Aludex Max vapor barrier, which increases air tightness, can be seen below the insulation and the VM Zinc breather membrane above. VM Zinc standing seam roof systems are very flexible and can cover almost all forms. Furthermore, both warm and cold roofs have no fire penetration or flame spread following B-Roof T4 tests. The right flashing must be used for the right detail. The G3 ridge offers a low profile ridge. EVE details must deal with both thermal movement and be weather tight. Let's look at the G3 ridge and EVE detail. The G3 ridge is an elegant, low-profile ridge that can be used on both warm, non-vented roofs as well as cold, vented ones. The ridge kit consists of a ridge cap, a connector piece, compression strip and a colour-coded stainless steel clip. As with all zinc roofing, specialist skills and tools are required. For a vented roof, a 30mm opening is required and can be covered with an insect mesh. For a vented ridge, the top of the standing seam panel requires a 15mm upstand. For a warm roof, this can be 25mm. At the eave, a standard T-plate is installed with clips. The hem at the bottom of the panel will depend on the panel length. 30 mm for up to 7 meter panels and 50 mm for panels up to 13 meters in length. For a dog tooth eave detail, the zinc should be punched. This eliminates the risk of any tearing of the zinc under high wind loading. A swept end eave is another option, but does take more time. At the ridge, the seams must be completely double seamed right up to the upstand. The ridge cap is placed over the ridge and the position for the clips is marked. The clips are then fitted with the bottom of the clip lining up with the mark. The compression strip is then fitted 10 mm below the upstand. The strip should be 20 mm wider than the zinc panel width. The ridge cap can now be fitted with the connector pieces. Two millimeters should be left between ridge caps. A number of options are available for the junction between the ridge and the verge. Every clip must be attached to the ridge with a stainless steel screw. The protective film can now be removed.
a specialist job with specialist tools. We always recommend recognized installers. Zinc, copper and stainless steel should not be installed by a general builder. Most junctions on a zinc roof are mechanical, but some details, such as certain roof light details as well as gutters, require soldering. Zinc is a straightforward metal to solder. The right tools and materials must be used. For natural zinc and engraved azenga, Zin 7 Flux can be used to clean the surface. For all other finishes of zinc, including VM Zinc Plus, the surface can be stripped back to bare zinc using a grinder with a plastic bristle. For quartz zinc and anthra zinc, Deca VM Zinc can also be used to strip the surface back to bare zinc. A small amount of Deca VM Zinc is poured into the soldering tray. Remember to close the lid on the Deca VM Zinc. The scribe is used to mark the lower sheet of zinc at 55 mm and another at 10 mm. The scribe is then used to mark the upper sheet at 30 mm. The protective film is removed. The Deca VM Zinc is then slowly applied to a 30 mm strip on the lower sheet. The zinc should be left for a few moments before being wiped clean with a cloth, revealing the shiny natural zinc. The same is then done with the upper sheet. The sheets are placed over each other and the top of the upper sheet is stripped. Before soldering, it is critical that clean natural zinc is exposed. Zin 7 Flux is then applied to the joint to be soldered. The soldering iron is heated to approximately 400 to 450 degrees centigrade and cleaned using the ammonia stone. The standard soldering stick is 60% lead and 40% tin and melts at 235 degrees centigrade. The first stage is to point solder so as to hold the two sheets together. For a flat soldered joint, the iron is then dragged over the joint allowing the solder to penetrate between the two sheets. The soldering stick can be used to put pressure on the sheets whilst soldering. For areas where there may be more resistance, for example in a large box gutter, a reinforced soldered joint can be used. Clean the iron and check its temperature. Small strips of solder are then laid across the flat soldered joint at 25 mm intervals. A small amount of Zin 7 Flux is added before pushing and pulling the small strips of solder into a more even layer. the protective film can then be removed. It should be noted that a properly soldered joint should be considered as part of a zinc roof and not something to hide. Um, we've got all sorts of questions coming in. Nick, I'm going to put the first one to you. Can hybrid roof build-ups be used? 
We don't recommend hybrid roofs. Uh, we have four warm roofs that we have, uh, and two vented roofs, sorry, which are available in our uh, specification guide. And we recommend that these buildups are adhered to under a zinc roof. Jonathan, somebody's asking, how does zinc perform versus other roofing materials? Well, there's obviously an awful lot of roofing materials. So um, comparing it to, to other metals, um, zinc uh, performs very well. As we saw in Liverpool Central Library, a roof last, lasted over uh, 100 years. Um, there's, there's no paint uh, on zinc generally. Uh, so you're just uh, relying on the zinc itself, which, which uh, lasts a very long time. So um, sort of similar to uh, copper and lead, uh, longer than painted materials. When compared with uh, slate, it depends a little bit on the quality of the slate, but there, are, there aren't going to be many roofing materials that are going to last uh, last much longer than, than zinc. Nick, we've got a very specific installation question here. How long would it take to install a roof of, say, 120 square metres? That's quite a loaded question, but I'll have a go. Uh, the, it depends on the how involved the roof is. So a, a straightforward 120 square meter roof, no penetrations. You know, you could be 10 days to 10 working days. But the more sort of roof lights, penetrations, things that are coming through it, then it becomes more involved. So that could go further. So it's it's difficult to nail it down. Other things that come into play too are the, the skill factors of the installers, the experience that they have. So there's a lot of variables in there. Jonathan, we've got somebody asking here whether there's a minimum order quantity for a bespoke coloured pre-weathered zinc. So we do offer uh, bespoke finishes um, and the, the, order, the minimum actually is three tonnes, which equates to around about 300 square metres. Um, so not an enormous job, but not a small job. So uh, um, if, if it is a bespoke, it has to be about 300 square metres. OK, thank you. And um, I'll give you the next question as well, which is how long will a zinc roof typically last? Well, um, I, I, th I don't I'm not aware of any roof longer than the Liverpool Central Library, which is 132 years. Um, that, that's particularly interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, Liverpool at the end of the 19th century was quite a uh, polluted environment, an awful lot of um, uh, coal, meaning acid rain by the coast. So uh, that, it's possible now a zinc roof that's properly designed and properly installed could last more than that. Um, the BRE actually give a, an expected lifespan of a zinc roof at 100 years. So uh, that, that's really what we expect. Oh, well, that partially answers the next question, but I'll, I'll put it to you anyway. Um, somebody's asking here, can zinc be used in coastal regions or should it be limited to inland usage? No, zinc can be used by the sea. In fact, uh, on a number of um, Victorian piers, uh, zinc was used to, to cover a number of buildings on the piers. So zinc performs extremely well by the sea. Uh, there are some potential issues for staining on non-rinse surfaces, so soffits. Not, not really a corrosion problem, but you can get staining. But on a zinc roof or a rinse facade, Zinc really does perform very well in extreme coastal environments. I mean, projects actually on the beach or within uh, right next to the waves, as it were. Nick, a question here. Is there a maximum thickness of insulation on a warm structural roof? I've never come across anywhere where the, a maximum thickness has been ruled out. Uh, it'll depend on the U values that the architect is trying to achieve and the type of insulation that's being used as to how thick that's going to be. Okay, thank you for that. There's another very uh, technical question here. Uh, Nick, for you again, is a zero degree slope acceptable on the apex of a barrel roof? Yes, it can be. As long as it hits three degree pitch within three meters of the ridge, uh, that's perfectly acceptable then to have less than three degrees at the very top of the roof. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Jonathan, I'm going to put this one back to you. Uh, <laughs> it's quite funny. Somebody's saying, I keep getting asked by clients, why zinc as opposed to any other roof? What's the one sentence answer? Why zinc? Uh, I, mean, I think probably, you know, we've talked about uh, durability, um, uh, sustainability. The, the, the big thing about zinc really is, is the aspect. It, it's an attractive looking uh, material, uh, whether it be used on a roof or a facade. Um, the, the fact that it's not painted, it's, it's chemically treated, gives it a slightly different texture to, to other metals. Um, so I, I would say the big factor is the is the visual aesthetic of a of a zinc clad building. Obviously, there are the other additional advantages of of durability and recyclability, but aesthetics really is the is the big one. Um, and what about noise? Somebody here is saying, can there be issues with rain drumming noise with the zinc roof? Jonathan, what would you say to that? Uh, um, uh, rain drumming, no. Um, uh, generally. Uh, what happens is that the um, you, you'll get far more noise from a roof light. Um, zinc's been used uh, around the world for an awful long time and uh, above um, flats in, in lofts, uh, and there really isn't a problem at all. Um, it's not like a sort of a B&Q on a Sunday afternoon when you're buying screws and paints. Um, the, it's a fully supported system. Zinc is relatively soft, not as soft as lead, but the fact that it's fully supported and not that rigid means that drumming noise from rain is actually never a problem. We, we never have that issue at all. It's something that people sometimes perceive as an issue, but in reality, drumming noise from rain is never a problem at all. Okay, thank you. And um, we've got many more questions coming in, uh, some really good questions, but I'm afraid we will have to move on. We'll try and get back to these later. Um, so now, part two. Now we move on to the aesthetics of zinc and standing seam facades. Zinc can be chemically treated to give a wide range of different aspects, but always with a hint of grey. Natural zinc was the only option until 1978. Natural zinc is shiny, but forms a patina when it reacts initially with water and then carbon dioxide. After three to ten years, an even middle grey patina, similar to quartz zinc, is formed, but it takes time for this to become uniform and many building owners are not that patient. Pre-weathered quartz zinc imitates naturally weathered zinc through a phosphatation process and changes very little over the lifetime of the roof or wall. Whilst pre-weathered light grey quartz zinc is not a painted finish, it is closest to RAL 7037. Examples of light grey pre-weathered quartz zinc. Left, Borough Viaduct, Houses in Winchester, and Seven Oaks School. Pre-weathered anthrazinc was first created in 1978 as a complementary flashing and gutter material for slate roofs. Its dark grey aspect has meant that it has become very popular for both wall cladding and roofing. Zinc would never naturally patina to a finish as dark as this zinc. Whilst pre-weathered anthrazinc is not a painted finish, it is closest to RAL 7021 seen here at Cardiff Arms Point and Bourne Estate, London. Blue, red, green, brown and now grey are our off-the-shelf pigmento range. The pigmento range is not a painted finish, rather it is more like looking at light grey pre-weathered quartz zinc through tinted sunglasses. The surface colour is created by adding mineral pigments to a durable pre-weathering which is then sealed with a protective coating, creating beautifully organic red, green, blue, brown and grey pre-weathered zincs. Pigmento can be used for the same applications as natural quartz zinc and anthrazinc. Glasgow Hospital, Architect's Office in the US and Southampton Hospital. Godson Street in London uses nearly all finishes. Last year, Pigmento Charcoal Blue, Dark Grey Zinc with a hint of blue, and Pigmento Storm Grey, Dark Grey with a hint of red, were introduced. Job specific bespoke Pigmento finishes are an option when the minimum order is three tons. 
A zenga, which is engraved zinc, combines a mechanical treatment with a chemical treatment. Maxwell Centre, Cambridge, BDP, Shrewsbury Renovation and Seymour Street by Eric Parry Architects. Azengar zinc can be used in the same way as all other zinc finishes for both roofing and wall cladding. A metro map of product innovation over 184 years. All finishes can be used for all systems, including standing seam panels, which are the only system that can be used for low slope roofs, 3 degrees minimum as built, as well as walls and even soffits. Warm wall construction is possible, but most clients and organisations such as NHBC prefer vented cold wall construction. It should be noted that zinc is non-combustible following EN 13501-1. Therefore, natural zinc, azengar, quartz zinc and anthrazinc are all A1. By applying a coating to the zinc, which is the case with Pigmento and VM Zinc Plus, this moves the zinc to an A2 classification, but still allows the zinc to be used on all buildings above 18 metres in height. Traditional standing seam wall cladding has been installed over a timber support, but for projects where EN 13501A1A2 materials are required, the timber can be replaced with a 0.7mm thick galvanised steel deck. As with all cavities, fire barriers must be used in accordance with B3 and B4 of the current approved document B. Standing seam panels will never be completely flat, but using 0.8mm thick zinc and single lock panels 430mm wide will help with this. For installation ease, it is recommended that panels be no more than 4 meters in length. A number of flashing details are available, depending on the overall design of the façade. In this instance, the vertical seams are aligned with the window jamb. Let's look in more detail at standing seam. The standing seam is a fully supported roofing and cladding system. Panels have a 25mm high seam and are typically 430mm centre to centre in 0.8mm VM zinc on a façade. One side of the panel has an L or male leg and the other a U or female leg. Two types of stainless clips are used, a fixed one-piece clip and a sliding two-piece clip which allows for thermal movement. The clips fix the male leg and the female leg of the next panel is then placed over the top. The seam is then closed to a single lock using a first closer. This allows the zinc to sit a little flatter on the façade. For roofing, a double lock must be used. Take care to install all panels with the same rolling direction. As the single lock is being used, it is possible to use only one piece fixed clips. By notching the zinc, the panel can no longer slide down. Panels may have to be cut to width and then profiled using a folder depending on the width of the window. A 20mm upstand is created at the sill and a 30mm fold for the base. The zinc can be cut using shears or a grinder. When folding the zinc, care should be taken so as not to damage the panel, and the use of a wooden block can assist here. The window sill is then folded using the appropriate dimensions and installed.
The jams and window head then receive the flashing strips and the window jam is installed over the top. The head flashing is screwed into place. The window jam is crimped into the standing seam, which is aligned with the window. The head flashing is then fitted. A 30mm head is folded onto the panels above the window. The seams are crimped and the film is removed. This is a method for installing seams that follow the window jams. Um, many, many more questions coming in. Uh, Jonathan, I'm going to ask you, first of all, we've got a passive house question. So which of your systems would you recommend for a passive house project with the aim of a thermal bridge free construction? Well, the, uh, the, the structural roof, the structural warm roof that we did see in the first chapter allows you, first of all, to have a, um, a vapor barrier, which gives you a very good air barrier, which is important, obviously. And then you have rigid insulation with plastic pegs. So whilst it's impossible to have zero cold bridges, they're very, very limited indeed. So for that type of building, I would say the structural roof um, which also has a, a BBA certificate. Uh, that's probably the best way of going. And you can use um, different types of insulation depending on what you want to do. There was, there was a question earlier about the thickness of insulation and, and the system in the BBA uh, actually uses pegs, which were first designed in Sweden. And uh, some of the insulation there is up to 500 millimeters thick. I haven't seen that yet in the UK, but we are getting to thicknesses of over 300 millimeters. So the structural roof would be the one to use. Okay. And um, while well, I've got you there, Jonathan, um, another question, which is, has the cost of zinc increased recently as many other building materials have? Um, the cost of zinc has, has Compared with other materials, not very much, very, very slightly. Uh, the actual uh, the cost of zinc itself has increased, but marginally. Some, some of our associated costs uh, for things like the, 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 the protective film have slightly gone up, but certainly compared with uh, timber, um, roof tiles, uh, zinc's increase has been quite small. Um, we're, we're sort of a lot less than 10%, whereas some materials have gone up by 30 or 40%. So slightly, but not very much. Okay, th I can see a few people are asking about that. So it's obviously a concern on everybody's mind at the moment. Um, Nick, we've got an installation question here. Uh, does VM Zinc warranty the product if others install the substrate to VM Zinc specification? You know, in a warm roof buildup, we recommend that the installer installs the vapor barrier and, if possible, the insulation, uh, simply because when third parties install the vapor barrier, they can fail. They aren't directly. Installers have received training on this, how important it is. So that vapor barrier must be installed correct. It must be the Aludex uh, membrane. So, yes, we would recommend that the zinc installer installs the, or gets in, as much involved with the roof buildup as possible. Okay, and um, while you're there, two more questions specifically about installers. Um, is there a VM Zinc approved list of installers in Ireland? There is, yes, we have a, a list of installers. Great, and somebody's saying, does, uh, what's, what, what is the procedure to certify an installer? The procedure to become, we have what's known as our zinc dollars who receive training on an annual basis I'm up to date with all the changes in the industry. They need to be on our installer list for a year before they can apply to be zinc at work. They will then be either vetted by ourselves or the FTMRC, which is the third body organization. And then they become onto our zinc at work installer list. So it's quite a drawn out process, but 
we have a it's something that we don't take lightly uh, because they can offer an extended warranty which we want to mean something to the end user jonathan we've got a question here about the life cycle so what is typically done with the zinc cladding at the end of its life is it reused or recycled and if the latter can it be recycled if a finish has been applied um zinc generally at the end of its life which we're talking about could be a uh, hundred years down the line uh will not be the zinc panels won't be taken off and reapplied um there there will be some corrosion and possible um uh, reduced performance in angles corners and so on so what happens to the zinc it gets uh, it doesn't get thrown away uh, zinc has a value so it never goes into landfill uh, we do use in our zinc uh, a percentage of uh, of zinc which was used on roofs but zinc's also used in uh, galvanizing in brass production zinc oxide for a, a number of um, things including hand cream and the like uh, so zinc won't go from an old building onto a new building once it's been up on the roof of the wall for 100 years but it will never go into landfill it will always be recycled some of which is then re-rolled and reused on a on a roof or on a wall okay brilliant and while we're talking about uh lifespan we've got another question which says in terms of durability and lifespan is cold or warm construction this does cold or warm construction provide a longer lifespan uh jonathan can you answer that for us please um yeah, we, we do get asked the question quite often, what is better for a, a roof, a warm or a cold roof? Uh, traditionally, if we go back 200 years, all roofs were vented. I mean, insulation didn't really exist 200 years ago. Um, but if a warm roof is designed and installed correctly, it works very well. As we saw earlier, for passive houses, it's probably easier to get a high performance uh, thermal uh, value and a uh, limited um, transfer of air using a, a warm roof. So I, I wouldn't say uh, the durability of the zinc is dependent on the on the type of substructure, uh, but the quality of the substructure is very important, whether it be cold or warm. Nick, got time for a couple more questions. Uh, technical question. So one, does the three degree pitch minimum apply to box cutters too? The pitch of the gutter is determined by the depth of the gutter. So the absolute minimum pitch for an internal box gutter is a 1 on 100 fall. But that may need to increase to 200 mil deep. Uh, once they go over 3 degree pitch, they can be as little as 50 mil. So it, we look at them individually. Uh, it depends where they are within the roof as well. If they're towards the outer edge, they can have 50 mil depth. If they're quite far into the roof, then again, they would need to have the minimum 200 mil and the one in 100 fall. So it's just each building is, is slightly different. So we're happy to look at them and advise on which box gutter suits the different applications. OK, brilliant. Thank you. Um, I will actually stop the questions there to keep on time, um, but there will be more Q&A later and we'll also be replaying this webinar and sending you a link by email. So um, there will be plenty of opportunity to think of new questions and get questions answered. Um, but now we're going to move on to part three. Next, the flexibility of zinc. Almost immediately after zinc was first chosen as a roofing material at the beginning of the 19th century, it started to be used as a metal to create roof ornaments. And it still is. On the right, zinc ornaments combining with slate on a bank in Toulouse, France, and on Clapham Bandstand. Ornamental techniques are also used to create complex facades and roofs. On the left, a project on the Isle of Skye, which uses stamped standing seam panels. On the project bottom middle in New Jersey, where quartz zinc has created a facade with depth which includes all of the contemporary mouldings and cornices. At Poundbury, zinc was used in a number of ways, including dormer windows and balustrades. Again, the malleability of zinc allows almost endless numbers of shapes to be formed, whilst greatly reducing the weight of the products when compared to stone or even lead. On the Parsons Tower project at Newcastle College, 
anthrazinc and quartz zinc standing seam panels were used to renovate an old 1960s educational block. Zinc lends itself well to this use as it is lightweight, flexible and a dry trade. The two photos on the left show an example of an extensive retrofit project in France. The choice of systems for zinc roofs is fairly straightforward, but for facades the options are far greater. Standing seam panels, rain screen cassettes or flat lock panels, which we are now going to look at a little more closely. Flat lock panels come in many shapes and sizes, but 3 meters by 600 millimeters is just about the maximum size recommended. Bespoke shingles are also possible as seen on this project in Canada. Diamond shingles can be used for roofing on slopes above 30 degrees, seen here at Brook Street and Bourne Estate. Kingsland Wharves Islington by JCMT Architects and New Science Building at University of East Anglia by Fraser Brown McKenna Architects. Traditionally, zinc flat lock wall panels of all shapes and sizes have been installed over a vented timber support and this is still the case for many projects. For projects where EN13501, A1, A2 materials are required, the timber can be replaced with a 0.7mm thick galvanised steel deck. As with all cavities, fire barriers must be used in accordance with B3 and B4 of the current approved document B. This system still follows the principles laid out in Code of Practice 143-5. Let's look in more detail at the installation of flat lock panels. Flat lock panels can be used for steep roofs, but are generally used for wall cladding with a continuous support. The panels are very flexible and can be diamond, rectangular or square in shape and most commonly have offset joints. Receiver U-shaped flashing strips are cut to size and screwed into place at the windowsill, jams and head, in this case in natural zinc. At the base of the wall, a receiver flashing is installed and the flat lock panels are fitted on a perfect horizontal line from bottom to top. Some flat lock panels are fitted with cleats, but here notches have been created allowing the panels to be screwed directly into place. The panel next to the window jam is cut to size and fitted. The receiver strip at the sill is notched, allowing easy access for screwing in. The panel that wraps around the jam and head is cut to size with a grinder, but shears can also be used. This panel has an additional 20mm upstand. At the sill, a panel is installed with 30mm upstands on the jams. The jam then overlaps this upstand. The sill is pinched tight at the base. The jams are then screwed into place. It is good practice to pre-drill the hole before fixing with the lacquered stainless steel screw. The window head flashing is then fitted. The final panels are installed. Zinc gutters have been used since the beginning of the company in 1837 and maybe even before. 
hidden box gutters are common features of zinc roofs. These should have falls of 1 in 100, overflows and expansion joints must be included. Hanging gutters can also be used on not only zinc roofs but also with roof coverings such as slate and clay tiles. A range of half round gutters in quartz zinc and anthrazinc with hidden brackets are stocked in the UK. Rectangular and OG gutters are also available. All should be fitted with a minimum fall of 1 in 200. Jonathan, we have a uh... A question which says, I understand Zin 7 Flux has now been banned in Europe. Can you confirm this? Uh, that's a very good question. And obviously somebody's been uh, um, looking at things in detail, which is excellent. Um, the, the European regulations did indeed change uh, last year. And therefore, we had to modify um, the uh, a couple of the ingredients in the Zin 7 Flux, which we did. Um, so uh, the Zin 7 Flux, which is sold in Europe and in the UK, uh, follows all the, um, uh, the REACH guidelines now. Um, so it's completely uh, valid and legal and can be used. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And somebody else is asking, um, does VM Zinc supply outside Europe? And they've said Africa. Can you answer that, Jonathan? Well, well Zinc, uh, again, has actually been used uh, for, for many decades uh, around the world, not, not just in sort of northwestern Europe, uh, France, Belgium, Germany, and the UK. Um, it's been used in North America, in South America, in, in Asia. Uh, we have done a few projects in, on the African continent. It's not a, a continent where zinc's used frequently. Uh, that would be incorrect to say. But there have been jobs that have been done in a number of African countries over the years. So it's not a, a regular occurrence. But uh, zinc really has been used on all continents um, uh, of the world. I don't think there's any any zinc on Antarctica. But I do know there's some zinc that's been installed uh, on a project in Greenland. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Um, Nick, we have a question here, which is what is the weight of zinc compared to other materials? Well, I'm assuming it's other roofing materials that we're dealing with. So if you take the likes of concrete tile, for instance, you're looking at 70 kilos a square meter, approximately just depending on the tile. Slip, for instance, you're at 35 kilos a square meter. Uh, and lead at almost 40 to 45 kilos a square meter when installed. When you compare that with zinc, which across the roof will average out at about eight kilos a square meter. So that then means that the structure doesn't have to be as robust because there is a lot less weight on it. So there's savings there to be had just by using zinc as compared to other materials. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question for you, Nick. Is it recommended for dormer roofs to drain back towards the main roof pitch? It can be done that way. Uh, dormers can be pitched either in, out or to either side. But again, it's how we manage the, the rainwater then. If it's drained back towards the main roof, then there must be a gutter. And again, we come back to the, the earlier question that I had about gutters, then the depth and fall of them must be correct. So it, it can be done. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Jonathan, we've got a couple of questions here about maintenance. One is, um, does zinc clean itself or is there a bit of maintenance involved? Um, and another one here is, does zinc self-heal? Right. Well, uh, the maintenance of zinc roofs and walls is really just letting the rain rain over it. We don't recommend any um, cleaning products to be applied to zinc. Um, we, we maybe would just recommend that now and again you clear out the gutters. Obviously a, a blocked gutter, whether it be in zinc or anything else, is not a good idea. But the main roof and the wall uh, doesn't need any um, regular maintenance uh, other than letting the rain rain over it. As far as self-healing, um, most zinc used, uh, certainly in the UK and Ireland, is pre-weathered zinc of, of different finishes. Um, if that surface finish is scratched, the worst thing that you'll see is the natural shiny zinc 
showing through, which is not going to corrode because it's just more zinc. That shiny zinc will then weather and go to a uh, just a, a middle grey like the quartz zinc. So unless it's a really big gouge, uh, the best thing is just to leave it and let the rain rain over it. And that's pretty much it. Uh, a listener say here, I noticed the panels are fixed tight. Does zinc expand? If so, when do movement joints appear? Zinc is, is never fixed tight or never should be fixed tight, sorry. Uh, zinc will expand. It expands at a rate of 2.2 millimeters per meter. Uh, the clips within the system take care of that. There are sliding clips which allow the zinc to move. Laterally, the, the upstands of the zinc are never at 90 degrees. There's always a slight angle on them to allow the zinc to expand into that space. So the, the zinc should always be allowed to expand. Okay, thank you. Another question for you, Nick. Is it possible to form a bespoke profile zinc gutter? It certainly is. Uh, however, that then becomes, you know, that whether it's going to be self-supported or whether it's going to be encapsulated in plywood, for instance, it just depends. Uh, the support of the zinc would be important because as as the gutter size grows, then the thickness of the zinc needs to increase as well so that it can be supported. So it just depends. We're, we're happy to look at that. You know, we have our ornaments department in France that will be more than happy to look at that and say either yes can be done. We are going to move on now. Please do keep posting questions. We'll try and get through as many of them as we can at the end of the session. But now we're moving on to part four. In this section, rain screens, procurement, budget and more from VM Zinc. For zinc facade panels that need to be up to 600 millimetres wide, the mosaic panel system is a good option. The maximum panel size is 600 millimetres by 2.4 metres, installed either horizontally or vertically. Panel depth can be altered from 40, 60, 80 and 100 millimetres, giving the possibility of a more textured facade. The reveal joints are always 15 millimetres wide. On the Water Street project in Manchester by Stephen Hodder and Partners, 40 millimetre deep anthrazinc mosaic panels were used. Shiplap or overlapping panels can be installed on cladding rails, metal or timber. The panels must be installed horizontally and have a 200 mm coverage width. The panels can have a depth of either 13 or 20 mm. Sine wave or corrugated panels are available in all finishes. Standard wave size is 18 mm by 76 mm, one of the few systems with visible fasteners and can be installed both horizontally and vertically. The panels can be perforated and even curved, as on this retrofit project in London by GPAD Architects. Interlocking panels are probably the most commonly used zinc rain screen system. Panels have a depth of 25 mm and the most common centre to centre distance is 300 mm including a 10 mm or 20 mm reveal joint. Interlocking panels have been tested to the CWCT protocol. Panels can be installed vertically and with a mix of finishes. Panels can also be installed horizontally. As with all zinc facade systems, a number of options are available for window flashings, but here we're going to look in more depth at a picture frame detail for horizontal interlocking panels. Interlocking panels. The interlocking panel is a 25 mm deep rain screen panel with a top-down installation when installed horizontally. The maximum panel width is 333 mm, which includes the face and joint, which is typically 20 mm. The centre of the panel is fixed with screws, whereas the ends are installed in place with stainless steel clips that allow thermal movement. Window heads, sills and jams are measured up. As with all facades, a number of options are available for window flashings. 
In addition, the jams and head use a folded flashing that connect the interlocking panels to the window itself, although this will vary depending on the exact window configuration being used. Most of these elements can be modified standard interlocking panels. First, the sill is prepared and cut to size using shears or a grinder. The upstand against the jam is created with a 50mm fold. The sill is temporarily put in place with the window jam, which allows the flashings to be precisely marked up. Any excess zinc can be cut off the sill and it is then screwed into position. Here we are showing a picture frame window flashing. The window jam flashings are cut to size and screwed in place. The window head flashing is then cut to size and screwed into place. The exact angle of the sill is measured, which allows the jam flashing to be correctly cut. At the top of the jam, a 50mm return fold is created. The position of the folded flashing is marked on the window flashing. The jam panel is then cut to size with notches stamped into the jam which will hold the panel in place. Then the head panel is cut to size and installed. When the window is completed, the panels either side of the window can be installed. Panels can be installed over timber or metal cladding rails. It should be noted that this is a vented rain screen facade and it is good practice to protect the insulation with VM zinc membrane. When installed horizontally, the end of the panels include return folds. Screw holes can be pre-drilled on panels. Oblong holes can also be used to allow for thermal movement. The facade can then be continued downwards. Once the facade is completed, including associated trades, the protective film can be removed. It can be left in place for up to two months. Protective film must never be partially removed. Different zinc facade panels will give varying aesthetics. Interlocking panels will always sit flatter than a standing seam facade. UK fabricators such as CGL, PSP and Sotec have carried out CWCT tests with panels made from VM zinc. Tests typically include 2,400 Pascal serviceability and 3,600 Pascal's safety. VM Zinc is ISO 9001 and ISO 14001 registered. Zinc also has a BRE Environmental Product Declaration EN 15804, which, amongst other things, indicates a lifespan of 100 years with full recyclability. The cost of a zinc roof or wall will depend on the system used, the size and location of the project, but most zinc systems can be supplied and fitted for between 100 and 200 pounds per square meter. The majority of products are also stocked by UK or Ireland-based distributors, making zinc rapidly available. 
as we've seen, zinc roofs and walls must not only be correctly designed, but also correctly installed. It is critical that standing seam roofing and cladding is installed by a competent hard metal contractor. VM Zinc at Work Partners have a track record of successfully installing zinc roofs and walls. They also know and understand our recommendations following training. As with all materials, health and safety regulations must be followed, such as construction, design and management regulations. It is critical for individuals to follow regulations through correct attitude and applying personal safety. All risks must be assessed. PPE must be used. Correct lifting and handling is always required and working at height needs to be carefully assessed. VM Zinc can supply literature and samples, as well as CAD drawings and specifications, including via the NBS Chorus portal, where BIM files are also available. We're always happy to discuss specific projects and can supply lists of appropriate contractors for your project. Thank you for watching. Now we have all sorts of questions coming in. Uh, Jonathan, I'm going to kick off by asking you whether advice is available for domestic scaled projects. Um, in a word, yes. Uh, we have, we do very, very large projects for all sorts of um, uh, buildings, but we do an awful lot of uh, relatively small scale uh, domestic projects, in, including uh, renovations and extensions. Uh, so we, we don't limit the advice just to large projects. Uh, we spend a lot of time working with architects on relatively um, uh, small projects from, from the sort of zinc quantity perspective, uh, but we, we're happy to answer those questions and get involved in those projects. So absolutely no problem there. Great, thank you. And Nick, we have somebody asking here, what is the best way to demonstrate to building control that the warm roof system doesn't require a cavity to address issues of condensation and drainage? This, this usually occurs, at, it's from area to area, it just depends on the building control officer. Uh, but we have our BDA certificate for uh, the warm roof build up, you know, our structural roof, which provides all that information within it. So if they're presented with that, then there should be no issue. Okay, thank you. Um, another technical question for you, Nick. Um, if I would like to install zinc on the roof and exterior walls, flat lock panels, with the same dimensions, which are the maximum dimensions I can use? Uh, the maximum dimensions, it's again, it depends on the, on the region, it depends on the pitch of the roof, it depends on, you know, uh, where the project is, but we can certainly help and advise with that if we, you know, uh, for instance, the, the thickness of the zinc might have to increase on the roof, uh, the number of clips per panel may have to increase. So that would be a specific question for that project. Uh, so it would be difficult to give a, a, a definitive answer here now, but we're more than happy to get involved and advise, you know, a, a, as much as we can. Okay, thank you. Jonathan, somebody's asking here, what is the difference between a rain screen facade and a fully supported facade? Uh, yeah, another good question. Uh, rain screens are a sort of a little bit uh, what the name uh, uh, implies. Uh, it, it's a screen against the rain. So the the, the outer skin of the the uh, wall, in this case zinc, is not designed to stop 100% of the rain from the outside. Uh, it, it should stop nearly all of it, but it's possible that moisture could get behind the panels. And the idea of the rain screen is that moisture can get behind the panels and then drain out. There's a cavity. So the, the zinc rain screen panels are fixed to cladding rails uh, with a cavity. And the zinc panel with the cavity creates a weather tight um, barrier, not the panels themselves. Fully supported zinc uh, roofing, for example, standing seam roofing, which can be used on a wall as well, is, is just that it's fully supported and it's the panel itself which is 
stopping uh, the, all the weather, all the rain getting behind the zinc. On a standing seam panel, no water should get behind the panel. If it, it, if it is, it's not been correctly detailed. So that, that's really the fundamental difference. And sometimes there is a bit of confusion uh, and people consider that standing seam facades are rain screen and they're not. Uh, a standing seam facade is effectively like a standing seam roof and it's the, the zinc panel which is keeping the water out. Can you get perforated panels? Yes, um, we, we've done a number of projects uh, using perforated panels. Generally, uh, going back to the rain screen question, they are rain screen panels, uh, generally they're wall panels. Um, so you can perforate interlocking rain screen panels. You can also perforate a corrugated sine wave. Um, the, the, the advantage of perforating zinc is that you're not exposing any non-protected uh, metal. You're just exposing more zinc. So it, it, it's it's fairly uh, it, it's fairly straightforward, and you can do um, custom perforations where you can actually create a pattern. On, on the zinc, uh, which could be a, an image, it could be in a lettering, it could be a logo, or you can uh, create standard perforation uh, to create a, a screen. So uh, yes, you can perforate um, zinc quite uh, effectively and easily. Okay, great, I'm gonna to move to Nick now. Um, Nick, what materials are not compatible with zinc? Uh, the 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 most aggressive material to zinc would be copper. Uh, so we don't recommend copper used in conjunction with zinc or even above zinc because the, the runoff from it is very aggressive as well. Some of the other materials are some of the hardwoods, for instance, which are quite popular now with cladding. Uh, if they have a pH level less than five, then there is an acidic runoff from them as well. Uh, some of the modern uh, mortars and plasters are not so much aggressive to it when they're dry but in their wet form so they they can cause uh, staining on the zinc which just leaves an indelible mark it won't do it any long-term damage but it will look unsightly and you know we we have that again in our specification brochure we highlight all of those materials that are incompatible okay thank you um nick another question for you is somebody saying I found it difficult to interest specialist installers in small scale zinc roofing projects. Any thoughts on this? So a very general question, but any thoughts? Yes, well, it's, I suppose it's a, it's a story of the, the success of the, the individual installers. Uh, the more successful they are, the more they win the larger projects. Uh, and obviously, you know, they're rewarded more for that. So. It is difficult, you know, and we see that across the board, which is why we constantly try to train new installers to keep up with market demands. You know, we're always uh, happy to bring people on and why we have an, a list of installers, sorry, that we can hand out to people. So are you able to offer, if people come to you directly, do you think you would be able to advise on installers who might be prepared to take on smaller scale jobs? Well, because we have quite a close relationship with our installers, uh, we know how busy each of them can be, you know, because we're, we're talking to them constantly. So if one guy is too busy, we can certainly direct uh, that person to some of the other installers who may not just be as busy. OK, brilliant. Thank you. Um, Jonathan, is working with zinc in cold temperatures recommended? Um, me all metal is um is cold brittle um and and zinc is as well so uh, folding zinc when the actual temperature of the metal itself is below seven degrees is not recommended so profiling a panel or folding a panel if the temperature of the metal itself is below seven degrees uh, that can create problems and the metal can indeed crack um, the, the, the solution really is to, is, uh, is to, to profile the metal in, uh, inside if it's cold. Uh, the metal can be heated up. Um, we've, we've done quite a lot of work in places like um, uh, northern Canada or, or Quebec where it gets incredibly cold. So it is quite doable. Um, sometimes um, the, uh, it's it's you could big, bigger problem with the installers being able to work as well as folding the zinc. So the the question is 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 accurate. 
it is cold brittle uh, it's temperature of the metal uh, not the actual air so you could have it on a cold day you could have the zinc in the sun and the zinc is going to be absolutely fine and the air temperature could be um, four or five degrees but uh, it is cold brittle so it should be used when it's not too cold nick can zinc facade panels be completely flat not completely flat all zinc it's, it comes as a rolled product so there's memory within the zinc uh, we would recommend for instance on standing seam facades you use 0.8 rather than 0.7 uh, this it won't completely get rid of the the undulations in the zinc but it will minimize them we also advise um, single lock folds on facades to put less stress on the seam so again this helps with the the oil canning or undulations but you will never get it completely flat unless you go to products like uh uh oh, i forget the name of them uh, the double-sided zinc panel yeah, I think the, the the product Nick's meaning is composite, which which is um, uh, is a possibility. It, it's used more frequently in 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 the US. Um, even that though, even that can be um, it, not, nothing's completely flat. I think I think it's uh, expectation. Um, but uh, interlocking panels will always be much flatter than, for example, uh, standing seam. Um, so it, it's it's a, it is a little bit of a horses for courses, but per perfectly flat panels don't exist in any material and certainly not zinc okay um, another technical question for you nick um how do you protect or seal the cladding if the surface needs to be punctured for fixings in both the horizontal and vertical plane um, and the example given is for railings uh, that's that's a question that comes up quite often uh, Certainly we get the likes of balconies and whatnot and with these glazed uh, railings and whatnot. And again, each individual uh, circumstance is different because it depends on the system that's being used. But the one thing to keep in mind is that the zinc must be allowed to expand and contract so it can't be clamped down very tightly. Uh, it also must be sealed because if water is constantly getting back in behind the zinc, then that's going to create massive problems further up the line so I, I couldn't sort of comment on one specific uh, method of sealing because there are so many different ones across the board but again we're all always willing to look at each individual setup and advise on the best way to to move forward with it okay we've only got time now for one last question so very quickly uh jonathan very important question what material guarantees are available uh, yes, very important. Just before I answer that question, I did want to mention something about cold brittle. Um, it, it's it's just for the installation. Once the zinc's been installed, um, it's fine. Um, we, we've done projects. Uh, there's actually a project in Siberia uh, where the temperature gets down to minus 50 and the, and the zinc's fine. So one, once it's been installed, there's no problem. Um, as far as as far as warranties, um, we we offer material warranties um, on the zinc. Um, and we have extended material warranties for VM Zinc at Work um, partners um, when we're, um, uh, we're assured that it's properly designed and installed. That's been um, 30 years, but we are uh, about to introduce a further extended warranty for those um, VM Zinc at Work partners next month, so in, in, in literally a few weeks, which will be a 50-year warranty. So we're going to be able to offer a 50-year warranty on uh, the zinc that's been installed uh, according to our recommendations, which ho hopefully is going to give uh, even more peace of mind to building owners. Okay, fantastic. Now, if we didn't manage to fit in your question, we will follow up with replies afterwards, as long as you've left your email address. Um, if you didn't miss anything, we will be preparing a replay. We'll send you an email later on today with the link and also with contact details for Jonathan and Nick for any other specific questions. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. And thank you, Jonathan Lowy and Nick Lavery and our content partners, BM Zinc. <laughs>